Hello everyone, welcome to Depression to Expression. My name is Scott and I'd like to talk to you about three reasons that you may be experiencing more anxiety than you'd like. Maybe on a daily basis, maybe on an hour to hour basis. Maybe you're dealing with panic attacks and they, they just come out of the blue. And you're having trouble even connecting what's causing these panic attacks. You're avoiding coffee, right? You're hanging around the right people. Work's going well. What can be the cause of these things? Is there actually a correlation? Well, I want to talk about three things today that may be causing anxiety in your life. Now, of course, normal anxiety, as if you're presenting something in front of work or in front of class, right? If you're meeting someone new, if you're going on a first date, second date, third date, well, this is normal anxiety. It's good. It's good. It means you care. It means you're a human being. But as we know, anxiety that is constant and seemingly comes up for no reason can be annoying and debilitating at the same time. Now, I'm not going to answer that phone call. So before we get started, I'd just like to play a little bit of a uh, flute made of walnut from High Spirit Flutes in the key of A, just to get us in a relaxing mood so then we can maybe have an open mind and think about these things on a deeper level as I go through them. And if you're looking for a quick fix, if you're looking for a short, short video, um, well, you're a little too late. Vine went out of business. And uh, I guess TikTok is shorter video, so you can look for anxiety tips there. But what I like to do on YouTube is to take my time, process thoughts, and relax a little bit because we do have time. We do have time. Our minds trick us to think we don't have it, but we do. Let's just take a deep breath together. Inhale. And exhale. You know, there's three things that may be causing anxiety for you. And I just want to talk about them briefly. And then maybe you can meditate on them. Maybe you can think about them and think about, hey, how can I incorporate this into my life? Or how can I avoid more of this as time moves on? And these are just ideas and come from my own experience and my own reading. Okay, so the first one is loneliness. You may be experiencing anxiety because you're lonely. And you think, well, people make me anxious. I have to remove myself from people in order to calm the anxiety. Or you may say, hey, I have a bunch of friends. So that's not it. But for those of you who may not have friends, or those of you who have friends, maybe you don't have any meaningful connection. And it took me a while to get friends where I actually could connect with on a very deep level. You know, loneliness isn't just having physical people around you or not having physical people around you, I should say. Loneliness is that feeling where you can't connect with someone else, that you're, you're sharing something and they're not really excited that you're sharing something. They're not very involved in your life. So I'd ask you the question, do you have someone that you can call or invite over or talk to when something good happens to you and then they get excited for you? What about when something bad happens? Can you call someone and they can empathize and be there for you? And if we take the reverse of that and the reciprocal, when something good happens to them, are you ex genuinely excited for them because you deeply care? Now, if the answer is yes, that's great. If the answer is no, well, of course we can do something about that. But the science behind anxiety and loneliness is really interesting because as technology changes, our biology stays the same. Everything around us changes. Look, we have a camera. I have a TV right there, a nice couch from Sears for $4.99.99. But biology stays the same. 
when we were in the plains of Africa, our ancestors needed tribes to survive, right? That's the only way we could survive is being together. People would be there for security and safety. Others would hunt. Others would raise the kids. If you were alone, if you were alone, you were on constant alert for animals and other tribes trying to kill you. Now, they've done experiments here too where if you're a lonely individual, you experience what's called micro awakenings, where you wake up in the middle of the night multiple times. Why? Biology stays the same. If you were sleeping alone in the plains of Africa, you would wake up constantly to see if you're secure and if you're safe. Anxious people also have far faster reaction times. They've done experiments. They show people a threat and they're hooked up to all these fMRI machines and have all these probes on their mind. Very anxious people, or sorry, very lonely people respond in 150 milliseconds to a threat. People with great relationships, friendships, and have that sense of security react in 300 milliseconds. Really interesting, right? Because we're on constant alert when we feel alone, that we don't have that security and safety. Because if you know you're safe, you, know, you can fall asleep easily. You know someone has your back. If you're alone, you're responsible. The threat's coming for you, and no one's there to stop it. So the one thing that may be causing anxiety for you is being lonely and not having that meaningful connection. Now, a, sh a shameless plug here is, um, is we have a Discord group and a Discord chat if ever you want to join and uh, meet some people all over the world and, and have that meaningful connection. It's great in person. I've actually met people. They've come in person uh, to meet me in Toronto, which is so, so cool. So meaningful connection is really important when dealing with anxiety and opening up and sharing that and having someone to have your back. Now, the second thing is that may be causing anxiety, and this is very, very true for me, is our removal from the natural world. It's like I'm, I'm surrounded by concrete here. It's weird. You walk, I walk downtown and, and everything's in squares and everything's concrete and there's so, so many people everywhere. And it seems so artificial, which it, it is. Have you ever walked through the forest and just found that you connected and felt better? That fresh air, the beautiful leaves on the trees, the dirt between your fingers? See, technology changes, but biology stays the same. You know, they actually have psychologists and psychiatrists that, that through therapy sessions, they actually take their patients and they walk through the forest while they talk. This is a kind of therapy. People are calling it forest bathing now. So what may be causing you anxiety is removal from the forest. You haven't been in nature long enough. Go to a park. Go to maybe where no people are for a little while. Get back into that feeling and that relationship, that deep, innate feeling that we have with nature and plants and trees and leaves and soil and roots. Connect with it. Hug a tree. Touch some bark. It's something that I do every time I feel anxious. I need to get out and I realize that I haven't seen enough green in a while. It's very, very important to me. So that's number two. And number three, it really connects with both of those things, is that we're removed from nature, we're losing that meaningful connection, and what we're doing to establish connection, and this keeps us further removed from nature. This rectangle that we have, it's a rectangle. Give it 20 years, we're gonna see, we're gonna look back at these and think, wow, that was some old technology. It's a rectangle we needed to carry in our pockets. It's all gonna be augmented reality soon. But it's really interesting. That social media use and us using our devices, study after study after study, especially with children. Look up Gene Twenge, uh, I'll put the links below. Gene Twenge, Keith Campbell, Jonathan Haidt. These people have spent their life when social media came out to see if there's correlation and causation between anxiety and social media use, and there is. Const it's a J curve. More social media use, more anxiety. And why does this happen? Well, let's be honest, guys. Come on. 
let's be honest, it doesn't feel good when I go through my Instagram feed and I see people who maybe have what I've always wanted and they have it already. They seemingly have a perfect life. And not only can that cause depression, but anxiety as well, because as I said in the beginning, we feel like we have no time. We feel like they're maybe younger than us, the same age, but they have way more. I'm running out of time. I'm not using time wisely. And have you ever been, been really anxious and thought that I have so much to do and so little time and the world just collapses on you and you feel that pressure from the world to be something more? That's what happens with social media for me. And I don't know about you, but it definitely does, especially YouTube, right? So we need more meaningful connection with individuals. We need more time off of our screens and in nature and less time on social media. Social media can definitely be the cause of anxiety because you're not only focusing on what you have in real life, but with social media, you're focusing on what you don't have. And you never feel like you're enough. And when you don't feel like you're enough, you feel like you're running out of time. We need to be able to breathe and sit back and, and enjoy the moment with people in nature away from screens. Now, I hope these three causes may have been helpful to you to, you, to make you just think a little more about what we're doing on a daily basis. Because it doesn't, it, it doesn't happen right away. This, this stuff has been adding up year after year after year. Or you're, you're watching Netflix a little more. You're using your phone a little bit more. You're busy at work and busy in the city, so you're not going and taking that time to, to exercise and go for a nice hike with people. This is what's happening more and more and more. And I think I'd invite you to just stop. Just take the time for a second. Stop and think about these things. What is happening? What are your priorities? What are you focusing on? What are you missing? These three things, more nature time, more meaningful connection, and less device time have decreased anxiety for me tremendously. Unbelievable the changes that I've seen in my life. And I hope that works for you. If you wanna join our online community on the Discord group, all the links are below. It's Instagram, Facebook, everything you need. Um, and I'd love to hear from you in the comments and hopefully see you uh, on the online community. Stay strong, everyone. Keep being you. Don't forget to express yourself. Bye-bye.